Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This video is for Sunday, June 11th, 2023, which is the second Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Hope you had a great week. I'm glad you're here. Now let's take a moment to frame our hearts and minds before God as we get ready to worship today. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, you are the source of our life and the ground of our being. By the power of your Spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So now the gospel lesson for today is from, here we go, Matthew chapter 9, uh, starting at the ninth verse. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. Then Matthew got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, Many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, Jesus said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, for she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players in the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So today's gospel lesson, at first glance, it looks like nothing more than a string of typical healings, right? And invitations from Jesus as he begins his earthly ministry. I mean, how many times have we heard all three of these these different stories in different ways, in different places, uh, different contexts, as Jesus is beginning his ministry on earth. Um, so they seem pretty familiar. They seem, dare I say, ordinary, because he's healing people and doing things all the time, and all of a sudden it's become the expectation. But you know what? Listen again to it. Um, the healings and the actions in this gospel, they actually strung together the way they are here in Matthew. Um, they represent this almost impossibly radical nature of the challenge that Jesus places before us as in this season of Pentecost, we try to become his church. Hmm. So, all right, so first up, Jesus walks by Matthew, right? And he's sitting in his tax collection booth. Now, that seems ordinary, but remember, Matthew is getting rich in that little tax booth, right? His livelihood has been built around gouging and taking advantage of other people and getting cuts of everybody's taxes, right? Matthew's paradigm is in that booth is to get as much for himself as he can, right? So he's kind of the opposite of a disciple, right? <laughs> and, and yet, for some reason, um, Matthew is invited to be part of the fold. And for some even stranger reason, Matthew follows him. <laughs> and But the thing is, that moment where Matthew gets Jesus invites him and Matthew gets up, this clearly is going to require a complete change of life for him, a complete 
change of heart for him, an irreversible choice to walk down an entirely different path. That's radical. But okay, forget about Matthew for a minute. It's not surprising to me that the recruiting of a tax collector as a disciple infuriated the elders of the church, right? And 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 not just for the obvious reasons either, because like, why would you, why, just why, right? But the thing is, uh, in, in their tradition, in the Jewish tradition, right, associating with and worse yet becoming friends with somebody so deplorable, somebody who is ripping off their own people, that, that just simply made Jesus unfit for ministry. Um, uh, forget about the fact that Matthew was coming into the fold. The, the fact is Jesus should never have talked to him in the first place. So now he's unfit for ministry. And guess what? He's ritually unclean. So yes, they're infuriated. Um, and then, of course, to add insult to injury, what does Jesus do that evening after he calls Matthew? He has dinner with a whole crowd of Matthew's friends and notorious sinners all over the place, right? We hear, you know, he has dinner with tax collectors and sinners, what the worst people. <laughs> so now everybody's shaking their heads and saying, what kind of church is this guy building here? You know, why would you go out and invite the the, the the scum of the earth to be your trusted friends. And, huh, man, and as if that's not enough, then as Jesus is walking over to this house, he allows this bleeding woman to touch his robe, something which is repudiated in the church of Jesus' day. You know, to touch or be touched by someone who is, is bleeding made Jesus, uh, what? Oh, you guessed it, unfit for ministry and ritually unclean. This is three things he's done today to knock himself out of contention for being a rabbi. But you know what? He's not even done yet. Because next up, what does he do? Where is he going when the woman touches him? He's going to heal the, this leader's daughter who has died. Now, to come into contact with a person who is dead, um, you know, physical contact as he does, really makes Jesus unclean and seriously unfit for ministry. Wow. <laughs> How can a guy who goes to all the wrong parts of town and talks to all the wrong people and touches what he shouldn't touch, how can he be the Messiah, much less even a rabbi? How can that be? What kind of church is he trying to build? And who in the world would come to a church filled with dirty, insolent, cheating, lying, selfish derelicts? Who would go there? Jesus would. And therein is the risk, the reward, the challenge, and the call. A whole new way to look at evangelism. We talked about it last week a little bit. But look, we often think evangelism is about, like I said last week, you know, people converting, people discovering who Jesus is. But look, look at these texts. Evangelism is not about people coming to Christ. Evangelism is about Christ coming to people. Jesus went to Matthew. He was just sitting there at his little tax collector's booth, living out his little life, doing his little things. Jesus came to him and changed all that. And then Jesus came to Matthew's friends, to their house, even though they were notoriously bad people. Jesus went there. Jesus came to the woman who had been hemorrhaging. I know the text says she comes up to him and walks behind him, but guess what? He went there. She had heard about him, and when he came to her area, she stepped in. He made sure he was in the right place at the right time. He came to her and made it possible for her to touch him. Where else did Jesus go? Jesus came to the leader's house. Now think about it. Bad enough that the girl is he's not supposed to be in the house with her. But look, this guy, a leader of the synagogue, Yairus, in most of the other stories, he's named as a particular leader of the synagogue. But look, he's a law-abiding elder of the church, and therefore he is one of the people that's going to be most against Jesus' ministry and most paying attention to the rules. And yet Jesus still 
came to his house. Jesus came to his daughter. Even though everybody said it was too little too late. Even though they literally laughed at him. He went. It's never, it's never too late. It's never too silly. It is never the wrong time to remind people that Jesus will come to them. There are people everywhere who need Christ in their lives. We know that. They're everywhere. They may not even know it yet. We may not even know it yet. But what does he do? He goes where he's not supposed to go because he's not trying to figure it out. He's not trying to decide, right? Our job is not to figure all this out. Our job is simply to do what he did, to love. And our job is to be absolutely certain that Christ will come to them. Right? This is, this is a radical disciple-shaped ship that Jesus is building, right? A motley crew of uneducated, unclean, cheating, selfish people who would never be accepted at seminary. Those people became the foundation of the church and not because they came to Christ, but because Christ went to them. Even before they looked for him, he was there. Even before they knew him, he was there. See, our call to discipleship and evangelism, it's not something that you do. It's something that you are. And it's nothing more than compassion, mercy, and heart. So here's your challenge. Go to someone, to anyone. Go to anybody. Go to them today. Because Jesus may already be there in you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you all the time. Take a moment to share that peace with the people sitting around you this morning, watching together. Um, you know, go go outside. Go to, go to anybody. Go to the first person you see. You never know when they're going to experience the Holy Spirit. And you never know what they're going to discover because of the difference you make because of your love and your compassion and your call to be a good neighbor. So make a call, send a text. Let somebody else know that Jesus is already there. And in the meantime, let's pray the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. And remember, you are all the body of Christ raised up for the world. So get out there, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for being here this week. I pray that you have a fulfilling um, and spirit-filled week and look forward to seeing you right here on, in, on video or right over there in church next week. God bless you all.